Adria, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Thank you so much, Paul. I'm excited to chat. This show is so, it's so good. I'm so, it, it's just an absolute treat. And I got to say the caliber of every actor in Andor is crazy. Cause I remember seeing A New Hope and it was full of these like theater veterans just absolutely hammering out these incredible performances. You studied at the Lee Strasberg Theater and Film Institute. Do they prep you for genre work? when you're studying for theatre and when you're, you know, reeling out the bard or is that quietly poo-pooed by teachers? Like in a classically trained theatre institute, how is genre work looked at? That's a very interesting question and I, I don't quite know. I can give you the answer <laughs> by what I sort of experienced. God, mm. I have no idea. That's so smart because that's all, literally all I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just hop from genre to genre like boom 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 boom, um, and I've done the one thing I have you know I study to do which is theater I've yet to tackle that um, mm -hmm. so I I think in in theater school for my experiences all we really did was work off of plays and and we did all the theater work we rarely got to play anything from from movies or scene work at all actually I think I had to. Uh, like film and TV class for a semester, but it only mm. lasted for what, like six weeks? <laughs> and that's it. Everything else was theater. And here I am in Star Wars. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> Well, I'm just curious because like Strasberg was a big, he pushed the method acting thing, right? Like method was what he believed in. You didn't go work in a scrapyard or anything, did you? Like how do you prep for a role that is so hands-on? I, it was during COVID, so I would have done that. I had the idea to do that. And I did for a second think I was going to work at some sort of like, there's like places where they fix cars, like a, a mechanic. I, mean, I don't know how you call that facility, but I I would have done that. But it was COVID and I was so afraid of getting in. I didn't want to be you know in contact with anybody because I had to film. So I really just went on a big YouTube hole of like welding and how to take cars apart like my youtube was wild when i was preparing for this day <laughs> i just needed to understand and it wasn't even spaceships like i could have gone to like nasa i don't know why i got so into cars mm -hmm. i just needed to understand like what every tiny little thing that it that a car you know what pieces meant and i did for a second i was kind of geeking out about it ask me anything about it now and i don't remember a thing right okay so it was just you like just, a kind of just watching them so much and i ended up filming yeah. that scene and, and i was like that was silly i don't need to know about cars <laughs> so you just deleted that from your brain yeah i understand yeah, I, deleted it. I was like i'm not fast 27 i'm in star wars <laughs> do they care on set i mean when you get there and you're handling stuff so do they go, okay, so this is the thermal shunt and you, you have to detach it clockwise or the nerds will get angry or do they just go, do whatever? You know, yeah. like how, no? They're, they're quite practical. I'm surprised with the practicality of the sets and just the city itself. Like the city was an actual city. It was a real city. It right. was like a couple blocks and you could walk around and I got lost. I definitely picked out, I was like, oh, Bix has a drink here on Thursday and Bix goes to dinner there and everything was there. It was a 360 sort of set. Same thing with like the, the, my yard, everything. I was able to organize certain parts. I was like, I feel like this looks messy. And Bix wouldn't want this. And I sort of organized that. And then when it came to the actual machinery, I was taught exactly how to do it. And it was quite, it wasn't as easy as it looks. And it was really heavy. Like I had to, to, I had to unlock it. So by the time I called action, this, I had this piece on top of me that if I didn't hold it right, it would just blop right on my face. So right. I was like holding it and then you had to really clock it. Um, so that took a couple of takes, but it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> That's set sound, I mean, because okay, so there's been lots of really great Star Wars shows um, lately, but none of them feel as real and you're kind of clue that the set was that immersive I mean was it like the Truman show where stuff's happening out of shot just to keep it believable were there bits of the set that you never got to how immersive was was that that street and that set it was pretty it was pretty immersive it was it, and it's a wild because Star Wars is a world that you sort of can't escape once you're in it, it because it was so you know you everything is a constant reminder that you are in Star Wars like you're like oh I can't for one second be like I'm not in Star Wars so 
I think in between action and cut, you have this, you know, you're living in this reality and you're really bringing this story to life that Tony wrote so brilliantly, but I'll set everyone's just like a 10 year old kid geeking out about everything. You know, everyone's like, Oh my God, did you touch this? This button works. Look, it lights up. And we're just (laughs) touching everything. Um, We really were a liability just poor the poor art department was like oh god please stop touching things that's great did you take anything from set you don't have to uh, you just know no, no, no. did. i didn't i really didn't right. i was very tempted but i respected the fact that what is from star wars belongs to star wars i'm i'm like that with the ocean as well whatever yeah. is from the ocean belongs in the ocean you'll never see me or in any of my house have seashells or anything that belongs in in the ocean same thing with yeah. with star wars i wanted to take my helmet and i asked for it once really early on and then i was like you know what no no it should stay here <laughs> i think it's better to apologize than to ask permission you should have just taken it and then when they ask you where it is you're like i have no idea yeah, yeah. i mean i could have been fired and possibly not been here with you right now so i was not gonna risk that i was like i want to be in this show no, that's a smart call. Given that we know where Cassian ends up and that you're not around for that, as an actor, what's it like approximately being aware of your fate or lack thereof? Is that, like, what, what does that do for you as a performer? It sort of, it's, it gives a little bit of clarity, right? You sort of know where you're sort of heading. Um, but I, I think Tony is really good at, at, at sharing that and sharing information and, and not keeping you out of the loop. He really wants to keep the actors very involved and, and informed, not maybe not involved, but really informed, um, of what he's creating. And he's also, sometimes he'll just call and tell me things and I could feel that he's like pitching it in a way he hasn't quite written it. He's just telling me and. And I just really appreciate that. I think that's so cool because then I know what switch I have to find in Bix or where I have to go to Bix. Um, like I knew exactly where Bix was going before I read an episode. And that was really cool because I knew what I was getting myself into. You know, it was, it was, he, he, he gave that. And that was, that was really, that was really cool. I'm being given the signal, but I can't tell you how much I love the show and you're so good in it. And thank you so much for chatting with me today. I had a great time. Thank you so much. Thank you. I had a blast. Thanks, Adria. <laughs> Bye. Bye.